Welcome back. This is a Dyson CY18 Kinetic Canister Vacuum Cleaner, otherwise known as a Dyson Kinetic Big Ball Animal Allergy Multi-Floor Canister Vacuum. And today I'm going to show you how to replace the HEPA filter. But wait, I hear you say, this is a Dyson Kinetic Vacuum Cleaner, which means there are no filters that ever need to be replaced. That is not true. And today, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, for those who don't know, the premise behind the Dyson Kinetic name is that Dyson claims to have built a cyclone separator that is so efficient, you eliminate the need for any kind of pre-motor filter. Now, that's all well and good. The problem is this vacuum cleaner uses a normal brushed AC motor, which generates a small amount of carbon dust just through normal operation. So you still need a post-motor HEPA filter to filter out said carbon dust, which this machine still has. All right, let's get right into it. First off, go ahead and take off the cyclone and dirt bin assembly, and then using a T15 Torx driver, remove the two screws that hold on the two side wheels. Next, you should be able to flip the machine over and undo four screws that hold on the front steering wheel and intake neck assembly. And then remove eight screws that surround the clamshell of the ball assembly to split the halves of the clamshell apart. Next, there are two more screws that have to be removed. They are here and right here and they're on the top side of the clamshell. And once you take those out, you should be able to sort of turn the entire thing over and remove the bottom half of the clamshell as just one big piece. Okay, so I went ahead and I removed all the screws and we're ready to split the case of the machine apart. Just go ahead and pull like this and the bottom of the clamshell should just sort of come apart. And here you can see the filter, the original one, sort of in situ. And this is the motor assembly. We can go ahead and just lift that out of here. Make sure not to lose any of these little rubber vibration isolators. They are essential. Just sort of stick that down to the side. Now go ahead and flip the machine over and we're gonna have to remove one Phillips head screw here which removes this little parking hook thing. Now you can get a flathead screwdriver and go ahead and press down two white plastic clips right here and right here. They're a little bit difficult to do, so be careful. Now we're gonna flip it up like this and get a flathead screwdriver. And there are two little plastic latches you can pop out to release this suction neck piece. And that just lifts up like this. And that reveals two more T15 Torx head screws right here. And there you go. Are we done yet? Nope, not even close. Next we have to disconnect the motor feed wiring. One little spade connector pulls off here from the power switch. We can unroute that. The other spade connector is inside this little plastic case here. You have to remove and then unplug. There's actually a little latch on this one you have to push up. And then you can unroute that wire. And now we should be able to pull the motor power feed wiring down through the filter and out. So there's the motor assembly. This leaves us with just the filter and cord reel assembly. Uh, in order to remove that, we're going to flip this over like this. You can see there's a little plastic tab right here. That has to be popped free in order to remove this cable guide piece from there. Then. The way you remove this is you take it and you just twist it like that to the side and it lifts right off as an assembly from the filter. And there is the filter. <laughs> oh Dyson, never change. Have you ever heard the joke about changing a heater core in a car? That the way they built the car was by suspending the heater core from a piece of string and assembling the entire car around it? 
Yeah, me too. All right, assembly is the reverse of disassembly. The first thing we have to do is go ahead and put the motor wiring back through our new filter. Now we can reattach the cord winder. I will concede that's pretty elegant. And reroute the wires. Got to get our little terminal case here. And make sure you get all this uh, wire routing just so, otherwise it could cause interference with closing up the clamshell again. Seems silly, but it's actually very true. We're going to go ahead and clip back on this cable guide, just like that. Now we're ready to put the top half of the clamshell back on, just like that. All right, and now we put all the screws back in. So there you have it, an appliance engineer's wet dream. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go have a drink, or maybe three.